Oh, well, archaeology and the uh, art history often have common sphere of interests. Uh, different items can be archaeological monuments and uh, works of art in the same time. I study a complex of such material sources, uh, arms and armor, and military equipment, appealing, if needed, to wider circle of artifacts. Uh, well, uh, how could I make Spacebar. the next the next one? Spacebar. Spacebar. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's just paper. Uh, well, uh, the conditional uh, boundaries that exist uh, between archaeological time and modernity must be specified uh, for each field of research. For example, the notion of ancient Russ is being considered differently from the points of view of archaeologists and art historians. And art historians consider that the period of ancient Russ lasted up to the end of the 17th century. Traditionally, and the most reasonably, those monuments which were found during excavations are considered as archaeological. However, uh, there also are also artifacts which came from their times and were never buried. Where does the past end and uh, the modernity begin? The experience of the 20th century shows that it is often impossible to draw such a borderline clearly. Even within the century the explorer lives in, two world wars, these grand catastrophes, become the triumph of destruction and not only ripped millions of lives, uh, but also buried under the ground or water a huge amount of historic and cultural monuments. As it is well known, uh, the general scientific methods of empiric research are observation, experiment, description, analysis, comparison, and measurement. Observation is purposeful study of objects based generally on the data from senses. In humanities, the results of observation depend on physiological constitution and personality of the scientist more than in natural sciences. We must keep it in mind, talking about objectivity of research. Experiment is active and purposeful intervention in the studied process, corresponding the alteration of object or reproduction of it in specially created and controlled circumstances. In history of art, scientists rarely are allowed to change somehow the objects with big artistic, cultural and historic value. Reproduction of an object, its separate parts, or the circumstances of its creation and existence is more promising. Such methods as description, analysis and comparison take the first place in the studying of works of art. They are logically connected with observation and each other. Description is cognitive operation, consisting of fixation of the results of experience, be it observation or experiment, with the help of definitive systems of designation accepted in science. Art historian stares at the work of art fixedly and from different sides, trying to note uh, its uh, unique features as well as typical. Then he begins the analysis. According to the definition accepted in contemporary logic, analysis is real or mental division of the object into components. It exists in the necessary connection with synthesis, combination of these parts into the single organic whole. The result of the synthesis is not the initial object, but something perfectly new, the knowledge of the researcher about the object. Cognitive operation detecting the similarity or difference of objects is called comparison. After describing and uh, analyzing a work of art, the researcher compares the results with the data about other works of art, by any means connected with the first, belonging to the same field of study with it. Ornaments on arms and armor can be compared with each other as well as uh, with uh, ornaments from other fields of applied, visual, monumental, uh, monumental decorative art. A comparison of ornaments by regional principle is no less important. 
Ideally, with the help of actually unified method, description and analysis, art historian must get clear knowledge about the object of his or her research, its characteristic features and differences from other analogical objects and so on. Measurement is a set of actions executed with the help of definite means with the purpose of finding the numeric meaning of the measured quantity in the accepted units of measure. It is also well known that uh, humanitarian knowledge <coughs> rarely is uh, clear and accurate. That is why art and culture historians must remember the words of one of the founders of Hermeneutics, Hans Georg Gadamer, who insisted on that no one alone can cognize and report the truth. And uh, that is why it, it is necessary to fully support the dialogue, to let the otherwise minded say his word, to be able to internalize what he said. Humanistic notions of understanding and interpretation, inseparably interconnected, have doubtless value for the mythology of art and culture studies. Understanding is always interpreting, and interpreting understanding, stated Gadam. He added that understanding is possible only as applying, correlating the content of the text with cultural, intellective experience of contemporaneity. So, interpretation of a text is not the recreating of its initial meaning, but the creation of the meaning in you. We must remember also one of the achievements of semiotics, expressed by Yuri Lotten. The notion of possibility of one ideal language as optimal mechanism for expression of reality is an illusion. Minimal working structure is the presence of two languages and their inability, each one separately, to reach the outer world. Lotman used uh, the pair contrast languages, for example, sound and written, verbal and pictorial, and so on, to illustrate this point from different sides. Methodology of art history stands on the three whales description, analysis, and comparison, or comparative analysis. Working the complex of works of art, scientists draw conclusions about their commonality in appearance and its causes. The, notions, the notion of style is necessary here, but it is also conditional. Some researchers consider it possible to distinguish only so-called big styles, like archaic, antique, Roman, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, Classic, Modern, and so on. These styles are connected mostly with Western European territories, and this creates big problems when someone tries to adapt them to other regions. For example, ancient Rus, or be it Moscow, Moscow Rus, or Russia itself, there is also the growing tendency to distinguish the small, local styles in the context of uh, separate regions or techniques. Stylistic groups are built chronologically, with the help of big styles as accessory indicators, kind of crutches. Archaeology deals with uh, such a subjective uh, notion as style significantly less, although it also cannot manage without it at all. Uh, strictly speaking, wherever the scholars must deal with art, or be it decoration or ornament, it is necessary to distinguish definite, definite groups by artistic appearance, make not only chronological and typological, but also stylistic division. Working on the theme of uh, ancient Russian arms and armor decoration, I applied the methodology of art history to sufficiently representative complex of artifacts from the 9th to the 17th centuries. I often dealt with objects uh, originated from archaeological excavations. In particular, such are almost all the artifacts of the 9th to uh, 15th centuries. All of them, somehow or other, were studied by archaeologists. And uh, in the result was created, for example, significant uh, typological system of Anatoly Kirpichnikov. Concentrated on the stylistic analysis in my PhD thesis, I gathered uh, 320 items of arms and armor of the 14th-17th uh, centuries in the United System, based on the features of their decor. <coughs> also, I studied uh, 133 items from the 9th to the 13th centuries, for the first time approaching to them as an art historian, 
with the mythology, uh, methodology of art history, uniting it with the archaeological data. I was able to distinguish several stylistic groups based on uniting the items according to the types and styles of, its, of their ornaments. I distinguished uh, the stylistic groups with geometric, floral, zoomorphic, anthropomorphous, abstract, and uh, floral abstract ornaments. Almost all of these groups, except for anthropomorphous, continued in the 16th and the 17th centuries. Items of different topological categories <laughs> often were placed uh, in one stylistic group. According to well-known definition, ornament consists of rhythmic rhythmically ordered elements. It is used for decoration of different wares, connected with the surface, which is decorated, organizes the surface visually, operates with abstract forms or realistic motifs, often stylized, stylized or sometimes skimmed almost to incognizance. Uh, such notions uh, as a element, uh, motif, uh, and uh, composition uh, yeah. uh, such uh, notions as element, motif, and composition are used uh, in study of ornament. Any separate part uh, of ornament is called element, and uh, several elements uh, constituting the repeating part uh, become motif. System of location of the motifs uh, on the surface of the item is called composition. Border, rosette and network are typical examples of ornamental compositions. There also are continuous filling and heraldic composition. A universal classification of uh, ornaments does not exist. In my studies, I chose a set of ornamental types for stylistic analysis. The type of ornament is the unity of form, expressed in the similarity of elements and typical motifs. Such notion is analogical to the archaeological type, which is characterized as similarity in the form of the objects. I think that the main types of ornament of the considered material are geometric, floral, zoomorphic and abstract. An ornament is geometric if its elements are straight or simply curved lines, or elementary figures like circles, triangles, rectangles, rhombuses, and so on. Floral ornament operates with motifs of flora and zoomorphic of fauna. If an element of the ornament has no real prototypes, this element is abstract. And uh, if all the ornaments uh, consist uh, of uh, such elements and motifs, then it is an abstract ornament. Other ornamental types, such as anthropomorphous and calligraphic, have less spreading on the considered material. Ornament can consist uh, of elements uh, of different types. Then it doesn't refer to any one of them, as though occupying place between them, for example, floral abstract. Inside the ornamental types, different subtypes exist. For geometric, they are linear, rhombus, circular. For floral, lily shaped, uh, arabesque, uh, naturalistic. For abstract, curl, scaly, and so on. Applying to the specific problems of studying of uh, ornamented objects of arms and armor, Lotman's idea of two different languages can be illustrated by interrelation between ornamentation and heraldry. They play different roles in the deck of arms and armor. Heraldic delineations uh, always contain important semantic meaning, informing the viewer about one or the other nobleman, ruler, or state to which the object belonged. Ornament also may have semantic content, but not necessary. First of all, it must be beautiful or, speaking correctly, correspond with the notions of beauty accepted in one or the other epoch and connected with the notion of style of its time. But this doesn't mean that heraldry and ornamentation exist isolated one from another. Though placed locally, heraldic delineations uh, usually are, origin are organically included in the common decorative composition of the object. Heraldic depiction of the depictions of the animals, 
two-headed eagle, lion, unicorn, and man, Saint George, for example, uh, being placed uh, on the objects uh, of arms and armor, thereby enter the context of uh, Russian applied art and got its characteristic stylistic features. They are surrounded by elements of ornaments and, as a result, become ornamental themselves. In their turn, floral, curl floral and abstract ornaments are getting more difficult, getting rich by originally extraneous delineations of animal and man. It seems that the only right way is to unite the methods of two historic disciplines, archaeology and art history, to compose the full notion of the material, belonging to the widest time period, up to their contemporaneity. If a material source originates from the excavations, or is a random finding in the ground, it must be studied, it must be studied archaeologically. But its decor, including often the form of the object itself, must be studied from the point of view of art history. Along with it, we must not forget about history, in particular history of the meanings, or I can say semantics, of those or other forms and delineations. Only by uniting all of these fields of knowledge, it is possible to research the material sources of the past fully. Thank you very much.